What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Content Aware Fill inside of Adobe After Effects to remove unwanted objects in your footage. This video should be pretty straightforward, but we're going to be exploring when Content Aware Fill works, when it does it, and some other cases where you just might try it out to see if it will solve your problem faster. As far as I can tell right now, Content Aware Fill isn't going to replace more traditional methods of creating clean plates where you use more painting work as well as 3D camera projection, but for very simple shots, it can save you a lot of time to remove those unwanted objects. Before we dive in, if you've been following our channel, you probably know that we're getting ready to launch a brand new visual effects app for filmmakers and visual effects artists called FX Soup. We're incredibly excited about it and would love your support. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, you can sign up for free to get launch updates at www.fxsoupapp.com. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of Adobe After Effects. I'm going to be showing you how you can use Content Aware Fill in four different videos here. The process will be the same, but uh, we're just going to be kind of testing out the results of uh, each shot that we're going to try to remove something from. So this is the first shot we're going to be working with. And what I'm going to try to do is, let's say we were shooting a film and we just didn't want this water tower in the background. So you can see it's a pretty small object in our frame. So I think Content Aware Fill is gonna work pretty well here. So let's get started removing this tower here. So how we can use content aware fill is we first want to create a mask around our unwanted object. So I'm going to go to the beginning of our timeline here and you can use any mask tool you want. For this example, I'll use the rounded rectangle tool and we'll just do something like this. And then we want to switch our mask mode to none for now. And what I want to do is I want to track our mask on this water tower. So I'll right click on the mask, click on track mask, and our tracker will open up here. And I'll switch the method of our mask to position, should be pretty good. And we'll go ahead and just analyze through our footage here, make sure it's uh, lined up as best we can. Just looking pretty good. It might be slipping a little bit. Seems like the mask is going a little down, but this should work just fine. We'll just expand the mask a bit. You can obviously clean this up manually as well. That was a pretty good track. You can see our pixels of the water tower are still within our mask mask here. I might just expand our mask a little bit for the sake of the content aware fill, but you can obviously clean up your mask and make it more accurate if you want to. But how this works is content aware fill is going to take a look at this mask and fill that in with data that is kind of around that object. So in this case, probably what we're going to get here is some trees where that water tower is. So before we go to content aware fill, let's switch our mask type to subtract. Now that's going to create an alpha channel where our water tower was. And then I'm also just going to go into our mask settings here and just increase our expansion a tiny bit as well as some feather. I just found that when I feathered my masks in Content Aware Fill, the results I get tend to be a little better. I'm not sure if there's any truth behind this, but this is just what in my experience has worked. So you don't necessarily have to do either of those things. Um, but yeah, this should be pretty good. Now we'll go to our Content Aware tab here. Now, if you don't see Content Aware Fill, you just need to go to Window and make sure Content Aware Fill is selected. But since we do, what we're going to do is uh, choose our settings here appropriately. You definitely don't want expansion at 64. This is going to expand your mask further. So kind of just like your mask expansion here. So we've already done that manually. We'll leave that as is uh, at zero. The fill method you're going to want to use to remove an object is going to be object. For lighting correction, I tend to keep that on with the moderate condition, but you can also play around with different options here depending on your shot. And yeah, this should be pretty good. Let's go ahead ahead and click on generate fill layer and you'll see that After Effects removes our tower and replaces it with some trees. Let's do it. And now you can see we click that. Uh, After Effects is analyzing our footage and it's going to add something where our mask is. All right, so as you can see, After Effects has filled in our app channel with a fill layer that it has created. So you can kind of enable this or disable this. And it looks pretty good on our still frame here. Let's go ahead and play through our scene, see how it's looking. You can see there's a little distortion on its edges. However, remember that this is a pretty wide shot and part of that distortion is coming from the parallax of the trees and stuff. The computer's trying to kind of figure out something that might be a little bit tricky. But if we go to our wide angle, you can see how small our mask was to remove that. It looks pretty much indistinguishable from the background. So I'm gonna say this is a total win 
for this shot, generative fill definitely helped us out here and was pretty quick to do. But anyways, guys, this is how you can use content aware fill to remove unwanted objects from your footage. For the rest of this video, I'm going to be trying out the same technique on several different shots to give you an idea of its capabilities and when it will succeed and when it might fail. So it's not a perfect solution for everything, but uh, as you can see right here, it definitely sped up our workflow. And now you can send this shot off to your editor and uh, there will be no more unwanted water tower in it. But anyways, let's go to the next shot here. Now we're going to try generative fill on a little bit of a bigger object in our scene by trying to remove this light pole here. So you can see we still have a little moving shot here, not too much movement, but a basic kind of handheld shot. And yeah, we're just gonna try to remove this pole here. So just off the bat, I think content aware fill should be able to do this because of two reasons. One, there's not much parallax in the background. It's mostly just one sky that it can just kind of fill in where our main light pole is. And the other reason is it's not so big in the frame that it's gonna be super noticeable. However, it is bigger than our water tower example. So let's give it a shot and see what we get. Go ahead and select this here. We will uh, use a standard masking tool to create our mask this time. Something like this should be good. We'll go to our mask settings, make this none. Then we will track our mask forward. For this one, I think I'll use perspective and we'll track through our footage. That's looking pretty good. So this is pretty good. I find that the content aware fill works a little bit better. You have a little more space on the outside here, away from your object that you're trying to remove. So we'll go to subtract and we'll just increase the expansion a little bit. And then again, we'll do a little bit of feathering like so. Okay, this should be pretty good. Now let's uh, try out content aware fill. So we will go to our content aware fill tab. Again, keep these settings exactly the same and click on generate fill layer and let's see if it removes this light tower for us. Okay, so this is the result of our content aware fill on this shot to remove that tower. It looks pretty good, I must say. However, it's struggling a little bit with uh, recreating this data down here. So it's not totally perfect. I guess if the object you wanted to remove was in a similar background, like just the sky here, like say, for example, we were moving a airplane or something like that, where the sky was all around that, it would be much easier. But since there's more kind of texture to the bottom of our shot here, where we're trying to replace this tower. It's struggling a little bit with uh, this area right down here. So let's take a look here. So this was before and then after. It removed that pretty nicely. It just, you know, if you tried this a couple more times, it might, uh, it might be able to give you a pretty decent result, but probably the better thing to do is just do some manual cleanup on that area. But uh, not bad. I think in a pinch it could work. If you wanted to add some uh, widescreen bars on there, just kidding. But um, yeah, you can see kind of its limits here with recreating some of this area that has a little more texture to it. Anyways, let's move on to the next shot. This is gonna be a little bit more interesting, I think. So we're gonna to try to remove this car from our footage. And I think we're gonna see some more issues with content aware fill this time, as you could probably guess, but uh, let's give it a shot. Let's go ahead and create a basic mask around our car, like so, switch the mask to none, right click, track this mask forward. We'll try perspective on this one, play that forward. Okay, maybe not perspective. Do you know, I think maybe the better thing to do is to just do this manually since the car's moving through this dirt background. So we'll just add a keyframe for our mask path and we will just literally go to the end of our timeline here and scale our mask down to just cover the car. And then we'll go in between our two keyframes. After Effects is interpolating those keyframes for us pretty nicely. Just increase the size a tiny bit. And we're just gonna kind of manually line this up here. Okay. All right, looks good. You can see we kind of tracked, hand tracked that car mask through our footage. You know, the tricky thing is we have the shadow here. I didn't think about that. Um, you know what, I'm gonna start from a new here. I'm going to select all of our points on this side and we're just gonna extend this. Now we're going to remove our car shadow as well. All right, so you can see we have kind of retracted our mask here to try to remove that shadow as well. Now let's try our content aware fill. So we'll go to subtract. So we've increased the expansion by seven already. That should be good. I'll just give it a little feather here like so. And we'll go to our content aware fill tab, keep everything the same and generate fill layer. All right, and After Effects has generated our fill layer pretty nicely here. Let's take a look. Okay, so you know, actually, 
better than I expected. You can obviously tell there's some weird distortion going on, but since our ground is flat and it's kind of a singular plane, that content aware fill is kind of keeping the motion of the ground of the original shot, which is quite nice. Uh, definitely not perfect, but this could work if you were compositing like another like vehicle on top of this, for example, where you were kind of hiding some of the distortion. So if you had some more layers of visual effects that you were comping on top of this, I could see this working out. And you know, that was really fast. That was a couple minutes. You know, I'm actually impressed with this one. I didn't think it was gonna do as well as it did. So anyways, guys, that is it for this video. That is how you can use Content Aware Fill to remove unwanted objects in your footage inside of Adobe After Effects. I hope this video was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what you'd like to learn next on the channel, and I'll see you next time.